Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Mike here, and welcome to the next lesson in our D programming language series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking a little bit about the semantics of the D programming language, specifically L values and R values. Now, these might be terms that you've heard if you're coming from a language like C or C++ or other languages where they really make a little bit of bigger use out of what these terms are. And they are, in fact, important. So I want you to go ahead and understand what they are. So let's go ahead and take a look at the definition, and then we'll understand how this all comes to play with the keyword ref, for instance, and why this is important to understand, especially when reading compiler error messages. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just take you to the D programming language website. And for this one, we're going to want to go to the documentation and let's go ahead to the language reference here. Now, L value and R value are going to notice aren't explicitly spelled out here or in an article. So let's just go ahead and search through the language here for L value here. And what we'll find it, it shows up in a few different places. L value, uh, L value again under templates and so on in arrays and so on. So when it comes to specifying what behavior actually happens in a programming language, these things are important. And again, these will be reflected a little bit in the error messages. So I just want to give you a tiny preview of what L value and R values are here. But let's go ahead to expressions here. And then you'll find here on the definition of terms here, L value and R value. So let's go ahead and click on L value and see if we can make something of this. Well, what it says here is the following expressions and no others are called L value expressions or L values. And we get sort of the enumerated list of things that are L values. So I think this will be useful for you to know about as a reference here. And you can sort of, by definition, say that anything that's not an L value is an R value. Those are two sort of categories defined in the language at this time. So R value is other things such as, well, what look like special sort of macros or enum values or literals. Uh, basically things that you can't take the address of. In fact, I think that's a great definition for what an R value is, and that helps us understand what an L value is, something that you can take an address of. But in order for you to have some intuition on this, let's just go ahead and show you some examples here with this. And I'll go ahead and build off of the code that we had last time in a sense. So just to give you a quick review of that, and then to talk about L value and R value here, here's the idea. What we did last time was we talked about things like pass by value and pass by reference. In fact, if you've been following this series, you've seen how we've talked about this in the stack and the heap and so on. But this idea is that pass by value means that we're copying a value when we call a function so that this argument's not actually modifying whatever was passed into it, as is this case here where in my main function, if I have a local value set to five, I'm really just passing in a copy of that value five into argument and then just modifying that copy. So in this scope in main, local is not changed. But when I go ahead and add the ref parameter here, then if I pass in some value here, or I should say the variable local here, then I'm actually modifying that. Okay, ref again serves as sort of another name to refer to local by within this scope here. Okay, so that's the idea. That's what we covered last time. You can watch the previous uh, videos if you want to understand that. So now let's go ahead and just start thinking about L value and R value, but I want to do this in the form of a little bit of an experiment. So let's say I've still got these two functions here, pass by value and pass by reference. And instead of passing in local here, what I want to do is go ahead and just pass in value five plus four. I'll go ahead and do that here. And again, remember what pass by value is doing. It's going to evaluate this result, make a copy of it, and establish that value into argument here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and run this again. And nothing's really changed here. Again, whatever value we've passed in here, the argument set to 9999. You know, we could print out what the argument is here if we want. That might be useful just to see that it's being uh, copied in here. So I'll just go ahead and put uh, arg. So let's just go ahead and see that that shows up here. Um, and actually, I'll have to uh, put a little bit of a space here so that you can actually see what's being uh, written out here. Uh, let's just go ahead and put another colon or something. And let's rerun that again, just so you can identify that this nine here is what in fact is being passed into this function. Okay, so you get the idea that five plus four is nine that's stored or copied into this arg here with the value nine that's then used in this function. We modify that temporary value. Again, that's in its own uh, stack here or activation record. And then 
we're just modifying that copy. So that's the idea again when you pass by copy or pass by copy value. And you can send in expressions that look like this, 5 plus 4, or maybe just something like local, where we can copy the result from local into this argument. Okay, now let's try that same experiment here with pass by reference here. Instead of passing in local, I'm going to pass in 5 plus 4 here. Okay, and if I run this, well, I get an error here. Okay, and in order to understand this error, let's go ahead and just modify our screen a little bit here. And it tells us function main pass by ref, where we're passing by reference, is not callable using argument types int. Okay, why? Cannot pass r value argument 5 plus 4 of type int to parameter ref int arg. Okay, so intuitively, what's it mean when we're doing pass by reference again? Well, that means that we're... Uh, not making a copy, and we're trying to refer to some other location by some other name. So 5 plus 4, where exactly is that? What's that exact location that I'm referring to by some other name? Well, this doesn't have a name. This is just 5 plus 4. It's just an expression. So that's sort of the idea of what an R value is. Okay, so kind of work with this intuition. And in fact, let's go ahead back to our language definition here. Or if I go ahead and expand this, R value built in address operator may only be applied to L values. Okay, so one way that we can check do we have an L value or an R value? If I just comment this out, well, let's just go ahead and take the address of 5 plus 4. Let's go ahead and see if that's some sort of location in memory here. And again, if I run this, it's going to say, you know, found <laughs> uh, amp ampersand here instead of a statement. Okay, well, what if I just did the ampersand of local here. Well, again, it's just saying, well, address of local. So maybe that's not giving us any hints. So let's actually assign this to some uh, pointer here that can store an address. Uh, or even better, since we haven't really done a deep dive into pointers, let's just try to write out this location like we were previously doing. So let's just go ahead and see if that works. This works. We are getting this uh, address here. And sorry, it's being printed out here of our local variable. And again, if I try that again with 5 plus 4 here, we should get the same error. 5 plus 4 is not an L value and cannot be modified, right? We could only use this address of operator on L values, okay? So let's go ahead and kind of summarize what all of this means here with this little experiment here. So L value, just to make clear, is something with a location in memory, okay? I.e., we can use ampersand, okay? So for example, ampersand local. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and put that in parentheses. Our value is something without a location because we can't take the address. So that's one way we could just think of L value and R value. So when you get these sort of error messages, you understand what's going on. And again, it's usually useful to think about this in terms of pass by value and pass by reference here. So if I'm passing by value, I can make a copy of an R value and actually pass that into a function. If I'm using pass by reference, I need an actual location. So I'll go ahead and put a note here. Passing by reference with an R value is not possible because we cannot refer to another uh, L value. Or I'll just go ahead and say, let me get rid of this and write it a little bit nicer, another location in memory. All right, just over my shoulder there. I'll get out of the way just so you can see everything that I wrote. All right, so that's the sort of idea here. So, you know, if I was going to write this out as sort of an expression here, you know, historically, um, and let's just go ahead and kind of put our summary here in another box here. 
uh, something like this. So when I say something like local equals five, historically, the thing that's on the left side here is where the term L value came from, something that appears during an assignment, typically on the left hand side. And this would be sort of your R value. Okay. But again, I think it's more efficient or better to think about this in terms of, can I take the address of something? If I can, then it's an L value. If I can't, then it's an R value. So that's the idea here. And depending on those semantics, when we do things like pass by value, well, we can pass in L values, which get copied or R values, which also can get copied into this result. They're being copied and stored here. But when we pass by reference, we need an L value. We need to refer to some specific location. And again, it's useful again in the deprogramming language to think about this. I'll go ahead and have a lesson later where I talk about auto ref and how that works and sort of infers whether you're doing pass by value or pass by copy based off of if you're passing in an L value or an R value. So at the very least, I hope if this helped you at least understand that L value and R value, if you see this in one of your error messages, it's not a scary thing. It's just something having to do with, can I take the address of this? And if I can, that probably has something to do with how I'm using it in some function or um, if I'm able to actually store and evaluate this result. All right, folks, so with that said, I hope the terms L value and R value uh, in this video are a little bit more clear and you can rewatch it or feel free, of course, to ask uh, any questions in the comments section. And that, you know, these are terms that oftentimes you'll hear experts throw around or again see in um, the debug messages and the compiler, but they aren't that scary. That's all it really is. Just think about the ampersand and address up that we just learned about in the previous video. All right. So thank you as always, folks, for your time and attention. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on these other videos as we're really getting into, again, the semantics of the language here. And then we'll be able to move on to more and exciting features. There's a lot planned here. So I'll look forward to seeing you then.